Today in the news, a backport has been spotted, surpass your GPU limits, and the fastest SSD around. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. All right, so I'm a little late on a few of these news, but you know what, better late than never. Also, I'll be going through them a lot faster than I usually do. Ready, set, go. Let's get started with Intel. It appears that we have our first look at a brand new architecture on the 14 nanometer process. A CPU has been spotted on the Sys software database with six cores and 12 threads. Now that might seem like a regular desktop chip, but it is in fact a server one. We know this because, well, it's written right there, but also because this benchmark was for two CPUs on a single motherboard. Now, how do we know that it's a brand new architecture? Well, take a look at the L2 cache. Skylake based Coffee Lake CPU CPUs have a maximum of 256 kilobytes per core, Skylake X based CPUs a max of 1 megabyte per core, and even the brand new Ice Lake chips at 10 nanometers have a max of 512 kilobytes per core. This leaked CPU shows 1.25 megabytes per core, which coincidentally matches a Tiger Lake Y chip spotted about a month ago. Since Tiger Lake is supposed to be on a smaller node than 14 nanometers, this chip is likely a backport of Tiger Lake in the server platform, maybe Rocket Lake SP. Intel did show that they are willing to roll out two CPU architectures at the same time, like they did on mobile with uh, Ice Lake and Comet Lake, and their presentation last week also hinted at heavy use of backporting in the future. Strap up, because Intel's lineup for the next few years is about to get real confusing. Next up, we got AMD. The Radeon RX 5500 series has been released last week and Igor's lab has already added it to their more power tool. In case you don't know, this tool enables you to blow past the overclock limit that AMD puts on their cards by messing around with the power play table in Windows. This resulted in RX 5700 series reaching dummy high clocks at the tune of about 2.1 gigahertz. Well, guess what? This is also the frequency at which you can overclock the RX 5500 with a little tuning on your fan curve. As with any OC, be careful when you overclock that far, but if you do, let me know down below. In storage news, Lexar has just showcased their latest PCIe Gen 4 SSDs, and damn is it fast. This SSD won't be available to consumers until mid next year, but it is on track to be the fastest out there. Up to now, most PCIe Gen 4 SSDs could reach speeds of up to 5 gigabytes per second. This one went all the way up to 7.5 gigabytes in reads. That was on a cherry picked benchmark though, so in Crystal Disk Benchmark, it still dished out a respectable 6.2 gigabytes read and 4.2 gigabytes writes. In controller news, we have Sony who just unveiled a new accessory for their controller. It's called the back button attachment and it adds two buttons to the back of the controller. Well, three if you count the uh, touchscreen as a button. As you might have guessed, the attachment allows you to remap some face buttons or triggers to the back of the controller. It also carries over the headset jack. Also in controller news, Corsair has just acquired the known custom controller company, Scuff Gaming. It kind of makes sense. The company has a lot of accessories targeted for gaming and streaming, and well, controllers are important, even for PC gamers. Anyways, this isn't an absorption, so Scuff will stay Scuff. Corsair just owns it now. In console news, Microsoft decided to confuse everyone as to how the next Xbox is called. All of this confusion stemmed from a Microsoft rep talking to Business Insider. He said, The name we're carrying forward to the next generation is simply Xbox. And at the Game Awards, you saw that name come to life through the Xbox Series X. Similar to what fans have seen with previous generations, the name Xbox Series X allows room for additional consoles in the future. It's not really confusing, it's just that the first part, if taken out of context, can be seen as Microsoft replacing the name of the Xbox Series X as just Xbox. In more simple words, the next gen family is called Xbox, the individual consoles will have slightly different names, starting with the Xbox Series X. Just like last gen, the generation was called Xbox One, and we had consoles by the name of Xbox One, Xbox One X, Xbox One S, Xbox One S All Digital, etc. etc. Also, that pretty much confirms that Microsoft is working on more than one Xbox console, something Phil Spencer said wouldn't happen in a GameSpot interview. 
Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions or comments, like why am I still wearing the hat, leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. To subscribe to the channel, stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm sorry if there was a little more echo. I had to take down some of the sound dampening, AKA one of my covers. Yeah, I had literal covers just hanging in the room um, for sound dampening. So it's way worse now.